Hello everybody, this is Thomas, the Karate Armchair Historian. Today we're going to talk about a movie called Karate, The Fist of Death. It's a 1961 feature directed by Joel Holt and also starring Joel Holt. This is not the best movie. The acting is poor. The screenplay is extremely convoluted. We really don't know what is happening in this movie, what is going on. However, it does include a very, very cool scene. About five minutes of the movie consist of the director showing JKA training in the early 1960s. Now the movie was released in August of 1961, so I imagine that the training scene takes place either in the late 1960 or early 1961. You can see clearly number of famous JKA masters in this scene. There is Kanazawa, there is Nishiyama, and there is Okazaki. There may be also other people, but I can't recognize them. If anybody can, please feel free to drop me a note. Now, the karate sequence contains three distinct scenes. The first one shows free sparring, Jukumite. A number of people, including Kanazawa, are engaged in free sparring. What's interesting is the narrator mistakenly calls it randori, using a judo term instead of a karate term. The second sequence is a very lengthy self-defense sequence showing a defense against a gun and a knife. And the third sequence from the JKA Dojo shows us participants doing a couple of kata. The first one is Kanku Dai. And it's mistakenly called something else by the narrator. Prior to the JKA training sequence, we see the main characters walking into the dojo, taking off their shoes and going into the office where they meet another character. Now, this book right here, Moving Zen by Mr. Nickel, talks about this dojo itself. And I'm going to read a little bit off of it. The Yotsuya Dojo was housed in an old, rickety building, and the front door was loose, rattling, and shaking as it opened or closed. Just inside the door was a little square of concrete. On entering the dojo, you had to remove your shoes at that little postage stamp of concrete before stepping onto the polished wood of the floor. I had come to the dojo with Klaus, a German friend, and we both bal balanced awkwardly, bumping into each other, blocking the doorway. By the side of the door was a cupboard with shelves for the shoes. But often the cupboard was full and you had to leave your footwear in an untidy pile on the porchway. Then he goes on. Once shoeless and up onto the wooden floor, Klaus bowed and I copied awkwardly. The doorway led directly into the office, small, with three desks jammed together, warm and slightly smelly from the old-fashioned kerosene stove, on top of which bubbled a kettle. A secretary occupied one desk, Takagi-sensei, the director, occupied another, while the third desk was occupied by one of the day's instructors. Despite the superb quality of the instructor, instruction, Monthly fees amounted to only a few dollars, and the association was very poor financially. The building was owned by a small movie company, and from the office led stairs to the company's upstairs cutting rooms. So, he's talking about here the first post-war JKA dojo. And that's, uh, as he says, it's located in Yatsua. So it's definitely the same dojo that we see in the movie. We see the little... Uh, the little postage stamp of a place where you, where you put your shoes down, and we see the office area. Now, let's move on to the movie. Thank you very much for watching. I have decided to leave the dialogue and the movie itself, as it is historically interesting, if often inaccurate. Thanks, and have a nice day. Now, these boys are doing what we call randori, freestyle fighting exercises. Are those chaps really hitting each other? 
Oh, no, of course not. They stopped just short of the mark. This in itself teaches perfect coordination between mind and body. Is that so? Uh, perhaps you'd like to see karate used for defense. That should be most interesting. This is karate defense from a sitting position. Tell me, why do they shout? Well, when you shout, you automatically exhale, and exhaling tenses all the muscles. This gives the killing blow more impact, and it also has the effect of freezing your enemy. How long has all this been going on? Well, the history is most interesting. It began on Okinawa many centuries ago. There, the tyrannical Satsuma clan denied the people right to bear arms. They also treated them cruelly. A devastating form of open-hand fighting was of necessity developed. And today, karate, as it has come to be called, has been scientifically perfected. Once he has mastered its principles, a man can call upon each fiber of his body to generate pure physical power of a degree one would not believe possible without the proof of his own eyes. This is a defense against a knife attack. By the way, Mr. Mayberry, the man who is defending is Mr. Nishiyama, one of the top karate experts in the world. He's also chief of the instruction committee of the Japan Karate Association. How long would an actual fight last? Oh, never more than a few seconds. Just until the killing blow is landed. Can you still do that, Matt? Yeah, sure, I'm like lightning. This is a defense against a pistol attack. <laughs> now watch him kick the pistol out of his hand. I say, what are those chaps doing? They're doing kata. Let's go into the dojo and watch. A kata is a series of techniques in a set sequence. This kata is kanuyu no kata. As you see, these kata include all the various hand and foot techniques as well as body shifting. The colors of those belts have some significance, I presume. Oh, yes. The words of the white belts are just beginners. Mm. Then you go up to green, purple, mm. brown, and finally to black. The words of the black belts are masters of this art. You wear a black belt, I see. Most of the kata have various techniques of defense and attack very skillfully woven into them. Mr. Harakar, what are those chappies doing with their fingers extended like this? You'll find that out in just a minute. Okay. A master of karate might be a dangerous man. Well, but so could any man with a pistol, a knife, or any weapon for that matter. Remember, what we practice here is a sport. If a man would kill with karate, he would also kill with any other weapon. 